welcome to the wait is over. To my right, I have Spencer Oliver. To my left, I have Johnny Nelson. Boom, boom. We have been here all week. You know, we've had the public workouts, we've had the press conferences, and then we've had the weigh-in. They had to be weighed in separately because the hatred is that real and there is that yeah. much animosity. Um, how good did Chris Eubank look on those scales, though? Listen, Chris, Chris looked great on the scales. He didn't look drawn. You know, he's made the weight quite comfortably. And you say there's been a lot of, you know, genuine... It's been bubbling up a lot this week. That's all been down to Chris Eubank. He's been playing the game. He's been playing the psychological battle. And he's been working, if I'm totally honest, because Liam Williams has been bubbling over. And, you know, I spoke to Liam in, in the hotel yesterday. And, yeah, he's, he's getting under his skin. That can affect game plans. And at this level, you have to stick to the game plan. So, you know, I think Eubanks has done a great job on that. But going back to his weight, I thought he looked great. You know, when you can tell when a fighter looks dark round the eyes, he looks a little bit drawn. But, no, nah, he looked good. He looked crisp. He looked ready to go. Tony, Liam came in one pound under, or 159. Uh, do you read anything into that? OK, let's, so let's look at the, the week, how it's built up. <clears throat> we start the week with the, uh, the press conference when the fighters were there. I was sat next to, to Spencer as the fighters went out there, and, and, and Chris is there with Roy Jones, all his entourage next to him. Liam's on the stage by himself. Mm -hmm. so, so now he's born in anyway, because he's thinking, it's like you boys are trying to bully me in my hometown, in Cardiff, what are you doing? So, so I just sat there for a whole... I hope Liam doesn't let him boss him or bully him. I know Liam. And so I'm texting him saying, yo, don't let him boss you. Don't let him bully you. Stand up for yourself. He's laughing. I was laughing, yeah. right? Because he's, he's, he's going, and I'm looking, I'm going, I can see his name, like Liam Williams at the top. He's going, is that why Go when he was up there, there yeah. sitting next yeah. to me, yeah. he's on yeah. his phone. Yeah. Yeah. Don't let him bully you. Don't let him boss you. Come on, stand up for yourself. Blah, blah. And so Liam looked at it, he blinked, and he looked up like that. So he started laughing and went, he's read it. Oh, so, so, no, so, because like it, it's not a normal thing to happen. But like Johnny, you know, Johnny's got a relationship with Liam and everything else. Like they're training at the Ingalls gym and yeah. all that sort of stuff. So you know they go back a little bit and all that. And, and I get it, right? And Johnny was doing the right thing there because Chris Eubank Jr. has learned from his father. You know, he comes, from, he comes from he yeah. comes from that. He comes yeah. from that stock. Liam's up there on his jack, yeah. right? Because Adam Booth wasn't there for you know because of the Harlem yeah. Ben. Um, so sorry, Harlem Eubank yeah. thing and everything else. So Adam's not up there. He's on his own. And I can get Johnny back in him up. Okay. Stick with it, son, because Johnny comes from that Ingle gym, yeah. right, where it's all about the mind games, the psychological. Brendan was the master of that, yeah. you know, so I totally get yeah, it. Yeah. So, it so that was the point. So Liam, he gave, he gave as good as he got. We've got to admit, Chris is, is a lot more media savvy mm -hmm. than Liam, so, so he comes across better. Even when he says nothing and just looks cool with his fur coat and his sunglasses, he looks apart. So it's now a battle of winning points, getting mm -hmm. clawing back. So Liam's trying to claw his way back. We do that, do the public workout. Chris walks out, mumbles something as Chris walks out. Liam's not letting that go in the shopping centre. Boom, straight to ringside. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? The whole crowd starts jeering at Chris. So Chris is like, oh yeah, hold on a minute. This boy is actually not by himself because we've still not seen Adam Booth yet. Yeah. So he's, he's barking at him. So now he sees in Liam, this, this kid does not, he's not cracking. He does not care. Mm. He's sensing that day by day. Then we come to the weigh-in, get to the weigh-in. Uh, and Liam gets on. He, before he actually weighed in, which many didn't see, he actually had a sip of water. He weighed himself on the scales. He's, I saw him at breakfast this morning. Yeah. I was, yo, have you, made this, have you made the weight? Went, yeah, yeah, I'm all right. He's eating and drinking coffee. I'm like, what are you doing? He came down, yeah. he had a sip of water before he got on the scales. And I thought, all right, made it. It was a pound number. It was a pound number. So therefore, now he knows he's fight ready. I know this boy's as strong as an ox. 24, in 24 hours' time, he's going to fill that like a, like a cobra. He's back and his chest and his arm. He's going to have that fight strength there. He's Chris, can I ask you how he strips that weight? Because the reason I ask you that, Johnny, is because on Wednesday when we had the open workouts, he looked ginormous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then today he looked like sort of half the size, yeah. but I'm just going like, is, is, that, is that what he does? Does he just strip weight he, quick? He strips, strips, I mean, and that's what you do 24, 48 hours before the weigh-in, you just cut your water. Yeah. You just cut your water and you, and you like, believe it or not, now it sounds a bit gross, you're peeing like hell, you're yeah. peeing every oven and it's just, it drops off you. Because mm. you, your body's been used to taking on three or four litres a day, then it stops. It holds it for the first like 12 hours and all of a sudden it's dropping off. Left, right. So you, and you, please don't do this as a diet, uh, as a diet. This yeah, can only right. happen now and again, yeah. you know, as part of the process to try and get down to make a weight. Well, he said but, that he's done that. Like, yeah. he, he said that he's mastered the art yeah. of losing. Yeah. Like, like when, when I spoke to him, I said, you've got a lot of weight to lose. You're looking really big for weight. He said, don't worry, 
and this is how I do it. Yeah. And I didn't think uh, he would, but he actually it. looked good to I, me. I never saw the, I know it's all the way until fight time. So I saw Cruiserweight three times a year. And every time it came to it, I said to Dominic, I'm not going to do it. And it's just, it, it blows your mind because all of a sudden, and so once you've weighed in and you've done the scales, you cannot eat anything until you've had at least two and a half, three, uh, two and a half to, uh, to, to three litres of water back in the system. No matter how hungry you are, sip it slowly, sip it slowly, and then Dominic can make you sit down, now eat. And I'll be trying to gan it because I'm starving. He said, chew your food. It's like a sergeant major. You've got to chew your food to replenish yourself in a safe way. And that's what he said. So now for both fighters, we understand the weight is not an issue. Liam came just under, Ima just under, uh, Chris came in, bang on. So now we are depending on skill, uh, timing, tactics, uh, and game plan. And that's what's gonna, what's it's gonna, so, so you'd look at Liam, Liam's just moved to Adam Booth. There's not much difference between Adam Booth and, and the Ingalls, apart from that one-on-one -on -one, uh, that, that Liam wants, who wants that one-on-one -on -one attention. Uh, for, for, for Chris, Chris has got Roy Jones there. Chris is trying to show him, uh, Roy Jones is trying to show him to box and bash, box and bash. And we've seen in the last couple of fights of Chris, he's like, he wants to get involved in this therapy. He's looking at him and thinking, can I have him? Can I have him? And he's got a box. He cannot be in two minds Saturday night fighting Liam. He's been well, caught in between two yeah, styles, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, he can't do that. He's got to get in and either beat him up, and, uh, beat him, box him and bash him. Don't be thinking, what shall I do? What shall I do? He needs to have made his mind up and that transition with him and Roy needs to have settled in now. Because if he doesn't, the fight doesn't go the distance. Yeah. I don't believe it goes the distance. You don't think so? Nah, but, and I also believe one of the fighters, I don't know if Sean will be, will get a, a warning, an official warning from the referee because there's that much bubble between. Surely, if, if there's a fighter that's going to get a warning, it would be Liam Williams. Don't be surprised. Well, yeah, I'm not so sure about that either. I'm not so sure about that. You know, let's go back to when Eubanks boxed Jules Groves. He, he, was, he, was, he was playing dirty in there as well. Chris, you know, he, he knows he knows his fair tricks as well. He's he's been around that. He's got experience on his side. You know, Ronnie Davis was there for such a long time. He's trained with a lot of trainers, Chris. Picked up a lot, a lot of knowledge. He's a smart cookie. If it gets rough in there, he'll get rough back. What I like about Chris Eubank Jr. is that he comes. He's got that DNA where he, when he's got to get down and dirty, he's got to get down in the trenches. He does it. And I think that's what he's going to have to do to scrape through this one because when that roof comes off, when William, William Williams comes out there, he will go for it. And he's told me that. He told me that yesterday at breakfast. He went, I'm gone. Out the traps, room. Yeah. I'm on him. He said, when Newbanks wants to breathe, he's not breathing. So he might just go out there and shoot his lot in the first... It might be one of those nine ways. Or ten it, rounds. It, it might be one of those ways. It's the, last, it's the best four rounds we'll have seen. You know, the year started now, 2022, February. It might be one of those where you think, wow, that is going to be a match. I'm going to call it, right? I think that he starts fast. I think, I think he comes back. Eubanks comes. Eubanks starts well, has a good win. Williams pushes him down a back stretch and Eubank nicks it on a split. Are you going the distance? No, I don't I'm see that. I'm going a split. I don't I'm see, I don't see him getting as well. I'll go the distance as well. I, I think this will be cagier than it seems because of Adam Booth and because of... Uh, nah, man. I just, I just, Williams, I'm not William, I no, William, two fighters right, that want to fight. Listen, I've spoke to Williams. To he has to set the pace. Yeah. He recognises. He's not a stupid guy. He's been around a long time, right? Williams says he recognises that he has to take Eubanks out of his rhythm. Because if Eubanks gets in a rhythm, yeah. especially with what Roy's working with with him, and he starts getting into that into that flow, yeah. Williams loses. Like he has to take the fight you know, to I him. I like this. It's two against one, isn't it? No, you boys are saying they see the finish line. I don't think they will. Now I'm not putting my I won't put my house on who I think will win. What well, I'm saying well, is, well, you can't say you're not going to see the finish line, but we don't know who's going to win. <laughs> yeah, because somebody, somebody gets stopped. Yeah, 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 somebody gets stopped because who? because because if, who? if if Chris if Chris plays Liam's game, then it's the shorter man of the two is going to come off better off. That's Liam. He's a short because if he's going to stand there, I told to told him. But if Chris boxes and bashes, keeps him long. Jumps in tight, boxing long, but does Chris, Chris, beats is him Chris, Chris isn't known for long range boxing. If anything, he is a bit more of a mid range. No, but fighter. no, but but Roy, he had the best boxing IQ, you know, ever. He was years above where he should have been in there, and he's been implementing that into Chris, right? And Chris hasn't looked particularly great in his last couple of fights because he's been caught between styles. But that's because he's been boxing a lesser opposition, no yeah. disrespect yeah. to his boxing. So he's trying stuff out. And Johnny, you know yourself, and you'll know as well, when you box someone that's maybe not as 
not as good or not on that sort of level. You, don't step you, it up. you drop yeah. it, you drop your standards. So what I'm saying is, this is a real fight, a real 50-50 fight. And I think Chris might just get it right. And I think that you're right, he has to get it right tactically, and it has to all fall into place. I think tomorrow night that might just happen. We also saw Clarissa Shields, um, she seemed to have the crowd on puppet strings. Uh, you know, she is a she is what the crowd wants to see, you know. She is she, she comes to, to Wales and she makes it the Clarissa Dan, Shields. Dan, do you know what it is? Johnny, we were talking about this earlier, weren't we? Like the girl's got an aura about her, and you very rarely get that. And when you do, you get something that's called a superstar. And I think Clarissa's got that superstar quality about her. She comes in, entertains the crowd, she delivers in the ring. You know, this girl has got star quality, and, and you feel that. When she enters the room, you know she's in it. She's raw. You know what? I, I, Adam Smith used the line, and I've used that line all week, stardust. And she sprinkled with stardust when she come in the room. And listen, I've seen many amazing fighters, talented fighters, great champions. They haven't had that star, that stardust. She is not... You wouldn't, I wouldn't put it up there to say she's an amazing, unbeatable fighter because she's been beaten, but she has that, 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 that it factor. That's something about her. And she, if she can carry that, because Samato said, you can have two fighters with the same ability. It's the one with the, that, that, that's got character will, that will come out on top. Mm. She has character. Yeah. Yeah. She has that self-belief. And the way she talks about her upbringing and where she come from, it's not fake. Yeah. This girl's for real. So mm. when she's in the ring fighting like a Tasmanian devil, that's what she do. Yeah. When, she, when she's fighting mm. and she still fights like she's the, the challenger. Yeah. That makes her dangerous. Look how many belts she's acquired. Look at where she is. But she still fights like a hungry fighter. That's not being fed for a week. Mm. That's dangerous. Yeah. Made the weight uh, 160. She said she made it very comfortably. Given yeah, that sure. She's been fighting at 154, yeah. 155 in the UFC as well. Um, look, when it's all said and done, 160 seems comfortable for mm. her. She did look like a big, strong unit up there. Yeah. She did. But, yeah. Emma Cozen's no pushover, is she? Listen, Cozen's no pushover. No, she's no undefeated fight. She's no pushover, but stylistically, it's perfect. Perfect yeah. for Clarissa. Because yeah, she, she sort of like comes forward, she plods forward. Clarissa, as Johnny said, she fights in first. She fights, in, you know, she puts her shots together, throws good angles, yeah. very heavy handed. You know, Cozen's a good fighter at a good level, but Clarissa Shields, I think, is special. There's a punch bag here, right? Did you see the, the punch ball? I, she got 902. Oh, yeah. I got 9 and 1, yeah. and, and I with twice I as much as her. What did you get? I got like 9, 20, <laughs> something. <laughs> like, man. I, I nine, did, man. I got 9, I 3, did. 5. I did. What, what did you get? Nine, yeah, he five. did. I was there. And what? I got like 9 something, didn't yo, I? Yo, yeah, yo, wait, something. wait. Is, that, is it recorded? Has yeah. Yeah. yeah, mine yeah, Unless yeah, I see yeah, it on yeah. film, I don't believe it. But, but anyway, anyway, the Carissa was hitting that, that, that yeah. power. That's the point. Like, I think the girl's got star quality, and I think... That, and do you know what else I like? When you get, like, these superstar-type people, like, the way she was feeding off the crowd, she gets energy from that, and she'll perform like that. If she was boxing in front of an empty room, I think she would perform terribly. Look at Entourage. There's a guy same age as me. He boxed Chris Pat back in the day. He's just... And he's... They're walking him out. Yes, Clarissa, not. She's, like, got them. She's 26 years old. I remember at 26 years old, Ali, at 26 years old, the things this guy was achieving, and that was before he got yeah, his yeah. ban. I'm telling you now, there is something very special about this young lady. I agree. And I am telling you now, she is, she is even, if, even if it's not boxing, she is going to be that fighter yeah. we talk about and, and remember her coming to Cardiff and remember the interviews with Hazaba. She'll fly. So, boys, it's a stacked card. Is there a fight or a fighter on there that you're looking forward to see most? Wow. Obviously, I want to see Clarissa. Uh, that's what yeah, Clarissa's the one for me that yeah. I'm looking forward most to seeing because I know I know the history of the girl, what she's achieved, yeah. where she's come from, where she is now, and that superstar quality. So she's the one I'm most looking forward to seeing. But you've got to go with the main event. Yeah, you've yeah, got to yeah. go with winning. And do you know why? Because they're both at that stage of their career. Yeah. The winner really kicks on, and the loser has nowhere to go. Yeah, no, you know, it's I, it's, I, it's a long road back. And listen, it's a good undercard. We've got Caroline Dubois. We've yeah. got. The, the English welterweight title fight between two fights that have only lost once. And the super bantamweight, Reese Edwards. Uh, he's uh, he's a star he's quality. Involved. Uh, uh, you've got uh, Steve Robinson. Uh, that's, uh, he's he's a heavyweight, heavyweight coming through, a heavyweight yeah. coming through. Callum Dubois, I must admit, when I saw her in the public workout, 
I could not believe it. A, a confirmation was ridiculous. Yeah. Punch, hand for eye coordination, very steady Eddie. A, a fam a brothers have come with her and they move like, they, they, they're just very, very respectful, quiet, yeah. but you know, there's something special about the bunch of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm thinking, I want to see her in action. It's a yeah. professional debut, so let's see what she's got. I must admit, that's the one I'm looking forward to as well. Caroline Dubois, for me, is yeah. a world champion in waiting. Agree. Ridiculous, fluid style. Um, but yeah, what a, what a night of Do you know what? It's, it's great, isn't it? Because when you get these main events, when you've got a fight that's a real 50-50 fight, sometimes you look down the card and go, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's good all show. right. It's Can't show. wait for the main event, but wow. What, right what, from the just, bottom to the top. What a way show. to start 2022. Yeah. So we've got we've got this one here, then we've got Carl Brook, then we've got uh, uh, Taylor. What yeah. a way to start 2022. The British Boxing Board of Control stopped holds fights uh, for for, uh, for COVID for January. February started. Boom. We are out of the traps. Yeah. And we're on it. Right. I'm joined by the pioneers, Adam Smith, Ben Shalom, Ben. Today we did something quite new and we went with a final face-off in the evening. Um, I think it was a great success. What do you think? Yeah, it was a perfect place to start, wasn't it? Because um, we felt it all week. The fans have just, we went out last night for dinner. The waiters, the waitresses, the bouncers, everyone in the street, everyone was talking about it. And so we knew we've got to do something for the fans today and uh, putting it at five o'clock and having the attendance. I mean. I turned up and there were queues around the streets. <laughs> yeah. like, Everyone was talking about the darts last night. I was at the Motorpawn Arena for the darts. Yeah. And I tell you what, they're all, everybody in this city is excited. And I think that's the thing. If you bring boxing to a place where there's a lot of history, but they've been starved of it for a while, and having thousands in this room today was just phenomenal. It, was, yeah. it just reminded me a little bit of the old sort of Ricky Hatton days where you're sort of getting everyone revved up for, for, a, for a massive night. Yeah. And I think that to do things new like this, uh, a, a different sort of entertainment, when you're, you're trying to reach different eyeballs, aren't yeah. you? Build the sport. I think it's fantastic. Liam needed it as well, didn't he? Because we were all it's saying good. he's not really shown you know, his true self and uh, he really embraced it today. He looks extra confident. And Chris, obviously, the pantomime. Yeah, he's been, pantomime he's been calm all week, Liam. Yeah. And then today, yeah, yeah, suddenly yeah. the crowd just got him and he yeah. was just like <laughs> revved up and yeah, ready yeah. to go. I think he wanted to knock Chris out there and then. Yeah, and then Chris, yeah. the pantomime villain, it's like the perfect, you know, it's a perfect environment for it. And uh, there's a bit of pushing and shoving, but it's, it's all in good fun, isn't it? It was all good natured. Uh, on to Caroline Dubois, she makes her debut. Um, I've been super impressed with her, you know. I, I've, I've said it on, on record that mm -hmm. I think she'll be a multi-weight world champion. You said it to me and I didn't blink. You know, didn't I, blink. I think, I think Caroline Dubois is a special talent. Yeah. Uh, she comes from a fighting family. She's a great girl, first and foremost. She's a, she's, she's a wonderful young lady and, and I, I think we're really going to help at Sky, you know, build her, and, and, and she's just going to be a fantastic figure for, for boxing going forward. You, know, you both know how keen I am on, on, on women's boxing, and, and, and over the years where we've seen it grow massively, and to have Clarissa Shields here, I mean, she is, she's magnetic. Yes, she's got she an is. aura about her, Dan, which is just sensational, what she wants to do with sport, how she wants to transcend it. You know, a huge fight with Savannah Marshall down the line there, and, and, and Caroline looks up to Clarissa and that's brilliant to have them both on the same show so yeah looking forward to to seeing the start for Caroline Dubois but also see how she develops over the next two or three years. You mentioned Clarissa Shields there she seemed to have the Welsh crowd on strings you know she was you know playing up to the crowd almost drawing her energy from them. 100% I said to Dimitri Clarissa has to fight in the UK she, she, she won't have experienced anything like it and as you say, she's a superstar, so she embraced it and the fans just loved her. I think she's loving it. She's yeah. so grateful to be here. She's so grateful to see fans that genuinely love women's boxing. And for them, it was an experience as well. They got to see mm -hmm. probably the greatest woman of all time, 26 years old, and what she's achieved. And to have her on our shows, it's a pleasure. And Ben, once in a while, people stop traffic. You know, there's, yeah. there's, a, there's a fighter, a sportsman, a sportswoman just does something different and you just have to stop and admire that she's got the it factor mm. Clarissa Shields and as close as we all are to Savannah and, and what a story she's made and now a world champion and sort of rocking the northeast you've got to take your, your hat off to Clarissa and yeah. what she's done and I think that is just a super fight they both come through their sort of semi-finals 
what a final of the summer. Well, let's have a look at that fight, you know, because Emma Cozen is, you know, ranked number three. Mm -hmm. This is not a, a, a pick and fight. This is a fight that is a real one. Number one versus number three. Uh, and it's a potential banana skin for Persa. We were, we were actually unsure about this fight, but the WBC were having none of it. They said it's a mandatory. She's got to take care of Emma Cozen. And yeah, wouldn't overlook Emma. She's had 11 knockouts herself. She's only 23 years old. She has a big future in the sport as well. And that's what's great about women's boxing now. You've got proper consent. She's got a great backstory yeah. as well, just like Clarissa, you know, where she's come from yeah. and how boxing yeah. saved her. And this is her opportunity. Yeah. She's undefeated, the princess from Slovenia. Yeah. This is her chance and she's a big underdog, but she'll give it everything. She's always smiling as well. Always. She's ready for it. Yeah. And uh, it's great to see women embracing the big stage like i was a bit worried about caroline she wanted she said she wanted to start on a big show it doesn't get much bigger than this but she walked out there to sweet caroline and she was just you know it was like she was born to do it which i really believe she she is um yeah so a lot of women talent on the on the card on saturday let's go straight to the top of the bill yeah uh you know it's been tense all week there's, it's no secret they don't like each other. We've seen the gloves are off. for a couple of years. It's been for ages. Uh, we've seen the gloves are off. We've yeah. seen the public workout where there was a, a bit of tenseness there. We've seen a press conference where Liam didn't bite maybe as much as we, we thought he would. Today he had the crowd behind him. What do we think happens in that fight? And also I'd like to make a mention that you got nudged out of the middle during a face-off. You were stuck <laughs> behind Liam Williams. And you and I were laughing. And we were laughing. <laughs> Look, Kala was, uh, he, he's looking big, isn't he? I wasn't going to say no to him. He's been in the gym, hasn't he? Yeah, he was charged up for today. He's so ready, though. He's excited as well. He it's, what? It's, it's he a is. massive he's fight. Exci he's excited for a Chris Eubank <laughs> Jr. He's ready for a big night on Saturday night. And so, fair enough. Um, but you know what? I know, I've spoken about this before, but I'm hearing that Liam Williams is going to come straight out the block, straight for him. And I don't know. Both of them, if they do that, I think that's maybe the, the, the Chris Eubank Jr. of all will deal with that. I think Liam needs to mix it up. I think he needs to look at the George Groves fight. But saying that, and what makes this so interesting is, are we going to see Chris Eubank Jr. mix it up? And then Liam Williams should, you know, resort to what he knows. I think it's they're a, both going to have to mix it up at yeah. certain points in the fight. They've both got brilliant qualities. Um, obviously, Liam has got home advantage here, but Chris starts favourite just from that little possibly bit of extra class. But it didn't work out against George Groves. Yeah. He was too late in the Billy Joe Saunders fight. He's at middleweight. He's in a place where he's comfortable. Mm -hmm. Roy Jones has obviously sort of hugely uh, improved. Certainly his attitude is, I mean, mentally and physically, he's always sort of been there and thereabouts. But Roy mm -hmm. seems to have given him a bit of extra. I'm patient. But, but he's not Roy Jones Jr. So let's see how that develops also you know Liam's gone to Adam Booth pretty late on in the day yeah. eight weeks nine weeks is that long enough we know how good Adam is and how tactically astute he is it's a fantastic I'll tell you what Dan I won't repeat what Liam Williams said to me up there on that stage <laughs> but he is bang up for this he seems it it was awkward up there with Adam Booth it was. It was awkward. Um, and that just adds something else. I mean I could see him there in his Liam Williams fat suit just thinking fair enough. Um, we had Harlem up here earlier on, and uh, Adam knows all about Chris as well. So um, there's a lot of characters involved in this fight, and there's a lot of tension, and there's a lot of you know building up energy. And um, could be the biggest yeah. character if Floyd Mayweather turns up tomorrow. Yeah. Is he flying in, Dan? What have you heard? There's rumours. I'm hearing the rumours, and I'm yeah. hearing they're true. You're going to pick him up from the airport? Or I or? hope so. I just want a picture with, with, uh, really? with Money May, of course. You might, you might have to get 30 tickets at ringside. I'm not sure our hotel he's going to be too happy with. <laughs> he's going to, I, think, uh, I think we're going to have to find something else for him. But, uh, let's see. Let's see if he, uh, if he turns up. And, uh, yeah, fingers crossed um, we find something for him. Well, there's a lot of moving parts and a, a lot to look forward to. Only one way to find out is to watch it. Do not miss it.